Hi, Rhett Riders Cruise here. Thank you so much for joining me. In this video, we are going to be looking at a possible AccuPlacer right placer prompt. In addition, we're going to be looking at a student's introduction. We will critique that introduction, and then we will look at a student's conclusion, and we will critique that conclusion. The goal here is for you to see actual student work and also for you to practice essay writing so that you too can ensure your success as you approach the AccuPlacer Write Placer or any essay under which you will experience time constraints. Let's take a look at the prompt. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, and or sharing this video with other fellow writers. So the prompt states, do you think we should be optimistic or realistic? Notice how direct the prompt is, and the prompt is asking you to take a position. So are you an optimist or are you more of a realist? Let's take a look at the student's introduction, and then we will critique the introduction. Humans and the concept of optimism have been coexisting under one galaxy since we set foot upon Earth. Optimism has been a partner of mankind for ages. At this point, it is ingrained in our minds and attains control over many of our actions. For instance, if we cascade back into the annals of history, we find our ancestors hunting menacing animals for nourishment. It is salient to note that our minds are specifically wired to avoid danger. How did early humans muster up the courage to strategize the hunting of these formidable beasts? There is only one word answer, to this, optimism. However, realism would not provide the same results. The pragmatic approach to a similar situation would include sprinting away from any lethality and explore alternatives to combat the hunger. Would our generations exist today if our forefathers practiced realism in lieu of optimism? Undoubtedly, the mere presence of optimism fosters the growth and positive outcomes compared to realism. We definitely notice that this student zoomed out looking at humans in general under one galaxy. And so they definitely zoomed out right here in this particular section where they focus on, again, humans in general, the one galaxy idea. So this is one strategy to use as a writer is to first examine the big picture, and then begin to, and again, zoom out, and then begin zooming in with more specific information. Next, the student then starts to, again, zoom in and give an example of what they are saying. So they begin to focus on looking at, again, cascading back into history and looking at our ancestors and how we hunted animals for nourishment. And then the student tied that into this idea of avoiding danger. Loved how that student did that. Then the student brought up a rhetorical question of how did early humans muster up the courage to strategize hunting? Um, notice the word choice also, instead of just saying beasts, they said formidable beasts. And this is very persuasive in looking at well, you know, how did we come up with the idea of hunting for animals rather than running away from them? Then they go into their response, and that is the idea of optimism. Then we go into the next part where they start to question the function of realism. And they begin that with the transition word, you know, saying, however, realism would not provide the same results. And then they give an example of what they mean. So I appreciated how intentional this student was in the transition. And also, you know, the transition forces the reader to question the benefits of realism. And now we go into the last sentence, which is undoubtedly the mere presence of optimism fosters the growth and positive outcomes compared to realism. And so here the student definitely reinforces the point of the essay, and that is that they are going to focus on optimism and being optimistic and how optimism has allowed us 
as a species to progress, and hopefully they will elaborate on what they mean in their body paragraphs. Let's go ahead and look at this student's conclusion. We will again read the conclusion and then critique it. Before we read the student's conclusion, right, writers, I'm sure you're already noticing, wow, this is a really big difference in terms of content. So you see a much larger introduction and a much smaller conclusion. While on the surface, I think, you know, again, especially if you're under time constraints, it is better to have a one sentence or a two sentence conclusion rather than no conclusion at all. And I always encourage students to please at least have a one sentence conclusion. Let's take a look at this student's conclusion and see, you know, did they leave us with a um, impactful ending? All in all, one does need to perceive life logically. However, the belief in optimism must hold more strength than realism. A world full of realism is limited and nonchalant. On the other hand, a world full of optimism and hope is colorful, inundated with unpredictable opportunities and positive endings. I really love how this last sentence is written. You know, on the other hand, a world full of optimism is colorful. I love the word choice there, inundated with unpredictable opportunities and positive endings. I really love that closing sentence. That said, I do see a couple of concerns, and that is this idea of using all in all for a conclusion. I highly recommend that students use the word in conclusion or perhaps another transition word indeed, or not use any transition word and at all. Now we have this sentence here in the middle where the student says, a world full of realism is limited and nonchalant. Um, I'm not sure nonchalant would be the perfect word choice. Um, I would just maybe keep it at a world full of realism is limited. And even just limiting that sentence and just stopping at limited even creates almost a mood of limitations because, again, we're limited. We are constrained in this world of realism. So I think that would have been an interesting writer's choice to just take this out completely and just leave it at a world full of realism is limited. Before I close out this video, right, writers, just a couple of other things that I noticed that the student did. You know, we've got transition words such as on the other hand, we have however, we have undoubtedly, we have for instance. Transition words are huge. They are important, an important piece of your writing um, or of our writing. Also, again, loved the student's use of rhetorical questions. They give us two, but not too many. Other comments that I might make is, again, word choice. We see words like, you know, cascading. We have menacing. We have nourishment. Um, we have words like salient. We have words like, you know, annals of history. We have words such as formidable. We have words such as pragmatic. Um, we have words like lethality, words like perceive, words such as, again, inundated, unpredictable. Great word choice sprinkled throughout the introduction and conclusion. And so I leave you, right writers, with a possible acuplacer, or right place or topic. Do you think we should be optimistic or realistic? created by a student looking at or examining their introduction and their conclusion, having some suggestions on how to improve their introduction and conclusion, and examining many of the positives that you see in this particular student's work. Thank you so much, Right Writers, for joining me. I hope this video ensures your Accuplace or Right Place or success. See you next Tuesday. Until then, take care, Right Writers. Love you guys. Bye-bye.